It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Comedy Forecast Network. Let's dog ear this for now. This is the 7th Annual Comedy Forecast April Podcast Today Spectacular, brought to you by the Comedy Forecast patrons on Patreon.com. It costs as little as a dollar a month to show your support for the show. Just search for Comedy Forecast, all one word with the number four, on Patreon.com. Thank you. This year's original 30-chapter story is called The Slow Down. To hear it from the beginning, just go to ComedyForecast.com slash 2021. Now, here's Chapter 21, An Open and Shut Briefcase. As events in our main story continue to unfold underground, there are other matters of import that need our attention. Previously... Famed infamous movie and pop culture reviewer Danny Hillcrest came into possession of certain items belonging to Dick Bando, the multimillionaire owner of over three million rubber band patents. It is now 8 a.m. Danny arrives at Bando's stately manor, carrying a little wicker briefcase. Danny knocks on the door. He knocks on the door with his other hand. Oh, that makes sense. I wonder if Mr. Bando is even home. Yes? Wow, what a fancy outfit. Is it a rental? I recently chartered a Tennessee tuxedo once. It came with this really weird belt. It was so wide, I couldn't even fit it in the belt loops. What are you talking about, sir? I never quite know. But I want to talk to Mr. Bando. I'm sorry, but Mr. Bando is not in the habit of donating to lost causes. Well, duh. How can you donate to something you can't find? Who is it, Hundy? It's Hatley, sir. Hilton Hatley. Dick Bando does not know anyone by the name of Homer Henley. No, sir. I am Hilton. I... You know what? Never mind. The gentleman at the door did not introduce himself. Hi. Danny Hillcrest here. Ah, let him in, horse feathers. Dick Bando is in the mood for a good chortle at the expense of others. Very good, sir. You may come in. Or I may not. It's like that Schroeder's cat puzzle. Is it alive in that tiny piano? Or is it out in the pumpkin patch? Are you sure I should let him in, sir? Now, Hillcrest, what brings you to Dick Bando's palatial home? And more to the point... How quickly can it be dealt with? I'm here about your briefcase. Dick Bando's briefcase? You mean the one that's identical to the one you are carrying? Which reminds Dick Bando, Hartford, light the fireplace in the main study. But, sir, it must be at least 80 degrees outside. Dick Bando wishes to burn a briefcase. Yes, sir. I can't think of a better way to take advantage of my doctorate. I'm not surely positive you want to, Burning Man, that Mr. Bando. And why not? Because it's not your briefcase. (laughs) What was that? Dick Bando had a spit-take generator installed on a whim. Observe. Dick Bando just heard from the bank. And not only do you not have any money, your sister's dead. (laughs) But back to the subject at hand. Of course Dick Bando has Dick Bando's briefcase. You are wrong, sir. (laughs) Wow. I didn't think that was worthy of a second spit take. There are still some bugs to work out. What do you mean Dick Bando is wrong? You are factually misinformationalized. What you have is Miss Fallmarker's briefcase. This, I submit to wit, i.e. Safari Chrome, is your briefcase. Preposterous. Dick Bando knows Dick Bando's briefcase when Dick Bando sees it. For instance, that nick in the handle and the just-go-away sticker there on the top. And oh, my Dick Bando, it is Dick Bando's briefcase. 
Give it to Dick Bando! Even though it is Herbie fully loaded with mysterious glowing spheres? You looked inside Dick Bando's briefcase? How dare you! Don't try to change the predicate. Subject! To prior sales. Now, where did you purchasely get these, and why do you have them? Very well. Dick Bando sees no reason to hide the truth. If you must know, Dick Bando has been using them to illuminate his home. I didn't see that coming. And yet, no spit take. Nevertheless, it is true. If you look up, you will see one in the chandelier. Oh, that's attractively pretty in purple. But why are you putting them in the safety-not-guaranteed deposit box at the bank? Dick Bando calls it Operation Daylight Saving Time. Dick Bando was told that if Dick Bando charged these up in the sun during the summer, Dick Bando could use them to save on electricity during the winter. Why don't you just keep them here at home? There is no room in Dick Bando's home for storage. Dick Bando's home only has 50 rooms, not counting the guest mansion. Besides, they cost Dick Bando a great deal of money. It seemed logical to place them in a vault. That makes sense to me. Then Dick Bando is greatly concerned. Where did you best buy them? Dick Bando does not have to tell you that. Remember, you're under oath. Is Dick Bando under oath? I think so. Oh dear. Very well. Dick Bando went to the... Another visitor? Dick Bando's house is not a place you can simply come a callin. Humphrey! Uh, uh, Hickenlooper! Oh, never mind. Come in! The name's Hart. Detective Hart. Two A's, two T's. Spell it right. Say it right. Dick Bando has met both of you before. Why do you insist on these elaborate introductions every time you arrive? That's not the point, Bando. I'm here about the briefcase. Don't tell Dick Bando that you have one, too. You didn't tell me that. Tell you what? That you have a little wicker briefcase, too. Where is it? Does it have the same little St. Nick and stickers on it? Here, I'll show you. Danny gently places the briefcase onto a nearby end table. Let's put them all together here on the table so we can figure out which is the most Dick Bando of them all. Snap out of it, Hillcrest. I'm here because I got in touch with Arnie Crunchpard. He told me all about the spheres. But I tried to tell the truth to you about this. You didn't listen to me. Of course not. I had to pay Arnie 50 bucks for him to give me the lowdown. Let that be a lesson to you, kid. Nobody listens to someone who'll give you the information for free. You have to pay an outside consultant to tell you the exact same thing. Well, this is my chancing opportunity to show you my bubble gumshoe skills. I was just about to have Mr. Bando informingly tell me where he got the spheres. Oh, really? Yes, really. A neat trick, considering the fact he's gone. <laughs> Not another one of those infernal spit-take machines. Technology! Who needs it? What happened to Mr. Bando? Did he melt from the heat? No, he must have slipped out while you were blabbering. At least we still have his briefcase that I put on this table and now it's gone. That's some pretty fancy detective work there, kid. You managed to single-handedly snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. I love jaws, especially the one with the shark. Where has Dick Bando gone? Where did he get those spheres? And will his butler realize he can now put out the fire in the fireplace? Well, actually, sir, I never lit it. Much too dangerous. Mr. Bando has the attention span of a two-year-old child. I believe it is the reason he constantly says his own name. Otherwise, he'd be likely to forget it. That's terrible. No, sir, it's actually an advantage. For me. You see, sir, every time I remind him about my wages, I increase my salary by ten percent. Someday soon, I hope to be making a staggering fifty dollars a month. <laughs> Huzzah. For more insights, be sure to listen to Chapter 22. Hop off, hop on.
Special thanks to David Wapple and everyone in the Virtual Writers Cafe, and also everyone in the forums at schoolie.net. In this episode, the part of The Butler was played by Grant Pachoco from the Saturday Morning Media family of podcasts, SaturdayMorningMedia.com. And the narrator was played by Gary J. Chambers, Gary J. Chambers, VO.com. Additional voices, as well as story and music, by Clinton Alvord. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved. Love old time radio? Yes! You know absolutely nothing about old time radio. Also, yes. Then Madison on the Air is for you. Follow Madison, a modern day makeup influencer, as she zapped back into the golden age of radio. Every episode is standalone with a wide variety of genres to choose from, like detective noir. You put the dick in private dick. Superheroes. So I am in the body of the green hornet. Westerns. Saloon fight. Now this is a western. Sci-fi. Dude, the Martian's got a freaking heat ray. Plus classic characters. Toto. Oh, I gotta get that dog into an obedience class. Really digging Dracula's OG goth style. <gasps> what if I killed freaking Sherlock Holmes? And many more. Actual old-time radio scripts adapted. It's like if the MST3K riff tracks guys were in the movies they riff. Start at the beginning or jump around to any title that grabs you. New episodes premiere the first of every month. Find us wherever you get your podcasts.